Mount St. Helens is exploding. A massive earthquake is ripping through the area, and a side of the volcano is giving way, crashing down in a deafening landslide. A towering wall of rock, ash, and debris is roaring down the valley, flattening everything in its path. Then comes the blast, a sideways explosion of superheated gas and volcanic debris. Trees are snapping like matchsticks. Homes are vanishing under an ash cloud so thick it blots out the sun. Ashfall rains down on towns hundreds of miles away. People are scrambling for masks and fleeing roads blocked by mud flows called lahars, toxic rivers of volcanic mud. The air fills with dust. Emergency sirens scream. Airports shut down. Hospitals fill with people struggling to breathe. The sky glows eerie orange as lightning storms ignite within the ash cloud overhead. This nightmarish scenario might play out very soon. Mount St. Helens, the famous volcano that blew its top in 1980, is acting a bit restless lately. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, about 350 earthquakes occurred from February to June 2024, and 12 more from September 2024 to January 2025. It was like a bunch of tiny tremors throwing a party underground. Most were so tiny you wouldn't even feel them. But on May 31, 2024, there was one that hit magnitude 2.0. It's just strong enough that if you were nearby, you might have felt a little rumble. Don't freak out yet, though. Over 95% of those quakes were super small, with a magnitude less than 1.0. Scientists say this is the biggest burst of shaking since the volcano last erupted in 2008. But the volcano has already done this before. In the late 80s and 90s, it didn't blow up, so more earthquakes didn't mean an eruption is guaranteed. What's really going on might be something called a recharge which is like the volcano's version of refueling. Magma, the hot melted rock, slowly climbs up from deep underground and fills a big underground magma chamber, about 2.5 to 6 miles down. When magma fills this tank, it can cause a lot of stress underground, which makes the ground shake. Right now, there's no other sign that the volcano is about to blow. No weird ground bulges, no extra gas leaks, no heat spikes. The USGS says this level of shaking can go on for years without anything major happening. The alert level is still at normal. But it was very different back on May 18, 1980. Mount St. Helens unleashed one of the most explosive volcanic eruptions in history. And it all started with a huge earthquake, bigger than magnitude 5. But this wasn't just any earthquake. It triggered a massive landslide that ripped off the top of the volcano and tore away the rock and ice that had been holding everything down like a giant lid. Suddenly, the pressure that had been trapping superheated water underground vanished. That water instantly turned to steam, and boom! It burst sideways in a powerful hydrothermal blast. And that was only the beginning. With the top gone, the magma beneath the surface suddenly felt free. It started rising faster, forming bubbles and erupting with terrifying force. For nine straight hours, Mount St. Helens was sending ash and gas miles into the sky. This giant blast didn't come out of nowhere. The warning signs started months before. On March 16, 1980, tiny earthquakes shook the volcano for the first time in years. By March 27, after hundreds of quakes, Mount St. Helens had its first little steam eruption in over a century. It threw ash and rock into the air and blasted a crater in the icy summit. The volcano kept getting angrier. That crater grew fast and cracks spread across the summit. At the same time, eruptions went from one every hour in March to one every day by April. Then things quieted down for a while. Few people realized that the danger was just beneath the surface. By May, over 10,000 earthquakes had rattled the mountain. 
The north side of the volcano swelled outward, growing about 450 feet. It was a bulge so huge that it looked like the mountain was about to explode. Scientists knew that magma was pushing up inside, creating a hidden cryptodome, a giant underground pocket of molten rock. And then it blew, shattering the mountain and changing the landscape. On May 18, 1980, exactly at 8.32 a.m., a magnitude 5.1 earthquake hit Mount St. Helens. Without any obvious warning signs, the entire north side of the volcano, the part that had been bulging out for weeks, suddenly broke loose and slid away in a massive landslide. This wasn't just any landslide, it was the largest debris avalanche ever recorded on Earth. Imagine a giant mass of rock, dirt, and trees rushing downhill. It was like dumping one million Olympic swimming pools full of stuff into the valley. When the cryptodome got ripped away, the pressure inside the volcano dropped incredibly fast, and this sudden pressure release triggered a huge sideways explosion that tore through the landslide debris. This lateral blast was insanely fast, over 300 miles per hour, and it ripped through everything in its path. Trees were uprooted, forests flattened, and a giant cloud of ash and hot rock shot straight up into the sky. In just 15 minutes, that eruption cloud soared more than 80,000 feet high, way higher than an altitude of 35,000 feet at which commercial airplanes fly. The blast destroyed an area nearly 19 miles wide from west to east and stretched over 12 miles to the north. In the zone closest to the volcano, almost no trees were left standing. At the blast's far edge, the remaining trees were scorched and burned. A huge area, about 230 square miles, was covered by a thick blanket of hot debris. That sudden release of pressure also affected the volcano's plumbing system, all the way to the underground magma chamber. With less pressure holding it back, the super-hot magma suddenly expanded and rushed upward toward the surface. Starting just after noon, fast-moving pyroclastic flows, super-hot clouds of gas, ash, and debris, raced out of the crater at speeds between 50 and 80 miles per hour. Those flows formed what we now know as the Pumice Plain. Scientists say the eruption hit its most powerful stage between 3 and 5 p.m. When the violent phase finally ended, the summit revealed a brand new giant crater shaped like an amphitheater. All day long, the winds carried over 540 million tons of volcanic ash east across the United States. The ash was so thick, it caused total darkness in Spokane, Washington, about 250 miles away. Ash also fell as far as central Montana and could even be spotted hundreds of miles farther east, all the way to the Great Plains, which is over 900 miles from the volcano. The massive ash cloud spread across the entire U.S. in just three days and then circled the entire planet in just 15 days. But there was one more problem. The hot gas and rocks were so wild and fast that they melted and ripped up a lot of the snow and ice sitting on top of Mount St. Helens. That sudden rush of melted ice and water mixed with loose dirt and rock, creating fast-moving, dangerous mud flows called lahars. Those lahars tore down the mountain into the river valleys, and the biggest, nastiest lahar hit the North Fork Total River. As this muddy, powerful flood barreled downstream, it picked up more dirt and debris, growing bigger and stronger. It smashed through bridges, crushed homes, and finally slammed into the Cowlitz River, reaching its peak size around midnight, about 50 miles away from the volcano. The whole natural disaster took the lives of more than 50 people. After the eruption, the mountain looked like a wasteland, and scientists wanted to see how life could start fresh in such a harsh place. So, their unusual plan was to release a few gophers to dig around the barren soil. Those busy burrowers churned up ash and volcanic debris, 
digging deep enough to bring buried bacteria and fungi back to the surface. Tiny microbes, especially mycorrhizal fungi, are crucial because they help plants get water and nutrients. It's like hooking roots up to a nutrient highway. Within six years, places where gophers worked got covered with over 40,000 plants. At the same time, nearby untouched areas stayed mostly lifeless. The fungi helped plants grow in the soil that was otherwise nutrient poor and lifeless. Even old growth forests buried under ash bounced back quickly thanks to their own fungal networks. But where forests had been clear cut before the eruption, no such comeback happened. No trees, no fungi, just burned soil even decades later. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.